So here at IPO Edge, we covered a lot of Reg A plus IPOs. And um, basically, these are open to just about anyone who wants to invest. And a lot of times, if you're investing in a company at this stage of growth that's private, you have to be an accredited investor. That's not the case with, with Bill's company. So Bill, tell us how that works. Uh, I own the shares, but do I need a brokerage account? Can I buy them with a credit card? How, do, how does it work for someone out there who might want to put something like $1,000 into your company? Uh, yeah, so let, let, let's work backwards for a lot of the audience. Uh, you know, I, I did a I did a call with 300 CFOs, 299 had no idea what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> so back in 2012, uh, the Jobs Act was passed. Uh, the SEC got around to actually implementing what came out of that in 2015 or so, and it allows a private company to effectively do a public offering and remain private. I'll say that again: a private company can do a public offering and remain private. Uh, so you can go out and generally solicit uh, for shares from accredited and unaccredited uh, investors. Um, and because of the manner in the way we raised our capital uh, to date uh, using that regulatory um, uh, framework, uh, we have to report to the SEC as if we're a publicly traded company every six months, except the stock is not yet on a national exchange. Uh, said a different way, we're in purgatory. We have all the negative aspects of being publicly traded without any of the benefits. Uh, so kind of working through that, we've raised over $70 million to build all this technology behind me from scratch, um, which relatively speaking is a modest amount. A lot of larger institutional investors walked through here pre-COVID and was like, yeah, our portfolio company would probably burned a quarter billion dollars by now. Um, and uh, I make, uh, can actually, why don't we go back to sharing a screen? It uh, makes it uh, a little yeah, bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's show the audience how, um, how it works. Uh, so since folks haven't done this before, so very simply go to nightscope.com. Um, and if you're interested where we're deployed and that sort of stuff, there's cool pictures and stuff here. But uh, if you go to the upper right and click the invest button, um, here you can uh, just give a really high level overview of the company. There's a four minute video there that talks you through uh, what we're doing, here's the historical share prices. Uh, I actually met, uh, John, I met somebody who turned us down back in 2013 at 33 cents a share um, a couple of years back. And he's like, okay, I was wrong. And he ended up <laughs> buying in at eight bucks a share and just gave us the credit for, uh, for the progress we've made. So um, we've made some progress over time. Um, and then if you're interested, um, two interesting things here. Uh, one, you can click the uh, button here and buy shares, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But here at the bottom right, there's a little blue icon, that instant messenger thing. That is not customer service. That is me answering questions pretty much 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., sometimes seven days a week. Uh, so if you have a question that doesn't get covered today, uh, just go to nightscope.com slash invest or to securityrobot.com. Uh, goes to the same page. And I'm happy to be responsive uh, to your questions. Just don't ask me if it's a bot or not. It is me. Uh, I have all kinds of awkward questions from folks thinking uh, it's a, a customer service thing. So uh, if interested, then you just click here, go buy shares. This will bring you to our broker dealer, our broker dealer's uh, start engine. Uh, and they process the transaction in, in a uh, regulatory compliant manner. So they can accept anywhere from 500 bucks to $10 million uh, completely online. Um, wire transfer, ACH, or frankly, even I think 70, 80% are on credit cards, uh, which is an interesting thing. We've got a lot of transactions, people just doing it on their, on their mobile phones. Um, and then uh, you basically go here. Uh, there's plenty of information here, uh, lots of updates. We've, got, we've closed over 17,000 uh, investors. Uh, we just added 1,000. A, a, a uh, there's about 20,000 followers uh, of this. And then every week they might get an update or something like that. But if you're interested, just click the invest now button here, uh, fill out the information and, you know, short and sweet, uh, you're pretty much done. Bill, I, I believe that you've already got a ticker symbol reserved. Is that right? And does that mean that that is the expectation that you want to go public as opposed to say selling the company to Ford or something like that? I mean, I won't hold you to it, but what's, what's the plan at the moment? Um, so as an officer of the company, I legally cannot um, promise an IPO, uh, but that is our uh, plan. I get this question, I don't know how many times a day. So finally, I asked the lawyers, the broker and the compliance people, like, can we just put something together? 
uh, to get people to understand what we're doing and how I can best answer that question as opposed to saying no comment or what have you. I don't know how many iterations of this thing we did, but uh, if you go to the newsroom uh, and go to the first blog here, and the, the actual thing is, are you going public? And everything um, that I can legally say in writing is there. Um, you know, think through the mechanism, you know, should it be a direct listing? Should it be a SPAC? Should it be um, um, a normal traditional S1? When's the right time? Do you have the right people in place? I mean, there's a lot of things. It's not just click the button and, and all of a sudden you're listed. And we want to be mindful and careful of, of how uh, we go about doing this. But uh, the answer to that question, John, is there in writing on the blog. And that's what uh, we can legally say at this time. Just so I understand, if I'm if I'm new to uh, to this game of investing in private companies, if 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 you do go public, whether through a SPAC, direct listing, whatever, even if I buy shares on my Visa card, someday they could wind up in a brokerage account at Schwab or Fidelity. That's how it would, that's how it would look from from an investor's perspective. Yeah. So uh, upon a a, a successful uh, public listing, no matter how you get there. Uh, all the preferred shares would get converted to common stock, no different than any other transaction. Uh, and then you can end up trading that at whatever brokerage firm uh, that you would uh, like uh, to do that, uh, possibly after a commercially reasonable lockup period, which we haven't you know, kind of decided just yet. Uh, Bill, my sense when I first got to know you and saw uh, what you built here is that it was like nothing I've ever seen. Are there other guys out there trying to do something similar and how do you compete with them? I mean, are you a better fit with some clients than others? Just help me understand the, the lay of the uh, competitive landscape. Sure. Um, I, I think if we disregard the one-off prototype or the person in the garage or the university project, self-funded, uh, properly funded companies and efforts that put millions of dollars to work to try to do this. Uh, there've been a handful of attempts. Um, uh, most of them have gone under uh, from Gamma to robotics to actually a major corporation. Uh, I always get asked, hey, you know, what happens when uh, some big corporation decides to go do this? It already happened to us. Uh, we pitched uh, Sharp, uh, the, the TV maker folks back in 2013 um, and said, hey, can you come in and be a strategic investor and help us get this thing built? Uh, and never heard back from them again after we pitched our hearts out. Uh, no return phone calls, no return emails, nothing. Three years later, I show up at a security trade show and there is an outdoor security robot raring to go to compete against us. And they had dumped $35 million to build an all new platform uh, just to go after us. And as you might imagine, I was absolutely livid. Um, but the funny part, now fast forward, I think May of 18, uh, they fired everyone, shut down the division. I believe they sold one to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and couldn't get it to work. So I think that speaks to how difficult this is. Um, there is a partial competitor off the street in Palo Alto, uh, Cobalt Robotics. I say partial because they're indoors only, uh, not really uh, fully autonomous. And uh, it's kind of a, like a virtual telepresence security guard. Um, there might be more uh, coming in the future, but uh, at this point, I think we're the 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 worldwide leader, and hope to maintain that uh, that leadership. Can you talk at all about uh, customer satisfaction or retention? Have you had any? I mean, you've only been around seven years, and, and these these have five year expected lives, so. I'm not sure you've had anybody had any of them go through the full five years yet, but um, do you have satisfied customers? Have you had them talk about wanting to get, you know, a new model? Just can you just Oh, John, every, everything has gone smoothly, just, you know, smooth as butter. Nothing ever goes wrong. We're a startup. Everything goes perfectly well. No, um, we, we bump our heads pretty hard. Uh, this is very difficult. And the stuff that you worry about uh, before you put something into the marketplace pretty much uh, not, none of it goes wrong. And the stuff that you'd never, ever thought about ends up being uh, a big pain in the butt. Uh, but now we're, we're at the point now that we've, I like to say every issue that we've got in the building, we can fix with people cash and time. We're past the, I don't know how to do this. I can't do rinse and repeat. And like, I like to tell a lot of founders and entrepreneurs, it's really easy to build a demo. Uh, it might be easy to build a prototype. You might get lucky and get one or two sold, 
But if you can get a client to pay you full price, work with you for a year, renew the contract, and then add more machines, now you've got something. And, and that's kind of where we are. Uh, even you know, during this pandemic, we're continuing to, to sign uh, uh, new contracts. And you know, there's a lot of lessons learned there. In some cases, we accepted clients that we should never have, right? They don't actually have a use case. You know, the worst one is the, somebody got promoted to be the chief innovation officer and therefore need a robot. Like, okay, what is the actual use case? What is the problem? No, 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 here's a check. We want to subscribe to one for a year. Okay, we'll take the revenue. And then when you sit and talk to them a year later, like, well, you didn't solve any of our problems. I'm like, well, you didn't have any problems to begin with. You just had budget to spend. So we're being very careful now uh, and give the sales team authority to kind of politely decline uh, business that we know. Um, in the other cases, I think, I think the longest one, we're on our fourth renewal with one particular client, four years, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, huge, uh, f- a few others in three years and two years. Uh, I think the largest one, we've got nine machines uh, in three states and five locations. Um, and there's some larger contracts that we're working on and then a lot of smaller new ones. In some cases, you never, you know, we focus on commercial real estate, on casinos, hospitals, manufacturing facilities, logistics, et cetera. But then the water company shows up, right? You're going to turn down the water company? Like, hey, you know, this could be a unique opportunity. I have a genuine problem. We can help. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting time for us, but there's a ton of growth opportunities for, for the company. I just want to ask one from the perspective of someone who sees one of these in the wild. Uh, I have not yet, but what normally happens? I mean, I'm imagining some people might be very curious and want to go up and talk to them. I mean, can they, can they talk back to you? Or, I mean, do people start to realize they're just like a security guard, so you should just leave them alone? I mean, what's, what's the human interaction like? Um, I was very worried. Uh, first time we ever put one out in the field was May, of, May 4th of 2015. May the 4th be with you, actually. Um, <laughs> and I was scared because I don't know what was going to happen. Like, uh, as I like to say, would, would society allow us to do this? Are people going to freak out or what's going to happen? Yeah. And the minute I saw people hugging the machines, you know, kids taking pictures, families driving for hours to hang out with the machine, girls leaving kisses on the machines. So I'm like, OK, <laughs> we may not have this perfect, but at least we're in the right quadrant. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it varies, John. And I think in some cases, I think we we're talking earlier off camera, you know, half to maybe two thirds of the machines are named, not by us, by our clients. Um, yeah. People end up getting uh, emotionally attached uh, to the machines. Some have their own Twitter handles or Instagram or, or own websites. Um, clients, you know, pre-COVID would have, uh, you know, birth uh, uh, cakes, you know, naming cakes, robot cakes uh, for the first day. Um, the machines can talk, uh, the guards can actually speak through the machine, uh, or you can have a two-way dialogue, uh, human to human. Um, so there's a, a lot of opportunities there for interesting human interaction. But once you're there for a while, then it's, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a device or that's, and okay, it's, that's normal and people just keep walking. Um, gotcha. Hopefully that is, is what we want, you know, over time um, and have that uh, positive impact uh, wherever we go. There's a question here from someone who's wondering about what the average investment looks like. I mean, and I, I know that this being a Reg A plus offering, I believe you can do up to 25 million in total, but you probably have a wide range of uh, investment sizes, right? Uh, so average is really hard. Um, so on the lowest end, we probably have investors, you know, $500. Um, we have investors that probably all in, a lot of folks end up, investing two, three, four, five times. I think yeah. we're probably one of our largest investors, probably nearing $10 million um, and everything in between, you know, $25,000 checks, $100,000 checks, $500 checks. And honestly, in some cases, John, I say this uh, in earnest, in some cases, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to us. Um, and what I mean by that, it's sometimes it's the person, it's not the money. Um, so a lot of folks are like, you're out of your mind, Bill. You have 17,000 investors and you're the intern head of HR, uh, in investor relations of IR and answering everyone's questions. I'm like, yeah, why do you do that? I'm like, do you know who our investors are? 
NYPD detectives, FBI, CIA, DHS, uh, investment bankers, recruiters, um, great legal minds, uh, chief security officers of major corporations, uh, vice presidents of leasing and major malls and REITs. Like, why would I not want, like, I almost don't care that uh, that person wrote whatever dollar amount check, they're financially motivated to help the company. New client, new recruits, how can I write another check? Oh, I told my friends that they should invest as well. Like, it's a completely different, you know, mindset. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing that, you know, folks that look at this and they're like, oh, you, you did this equity crowdfunding type of stuff, like in a, in a negative way. Right. And I'm like, you know, what do you think Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley do all day? You know, someone files an S1 and what is that? That is one massive global equity crowdfunding exercise to get every Tom, Dick and Harry to write a check. Right. The difference is, right? Um, so I think in a lot of cases, it ends up being interesting for a SPAC, for example, looking at the us and like, so you're going to bring 17,000 retail investors that are going to provide the volume, uh, you know, over and above a, an underlying pipe, you know, that gets interesting, right? Um, so it, it's, and you know, if you look at the mission, if you're trying to secure the entire U.S. and you're serious about it, do you really think, you know, four VCs sitting in a room worried about all the wrong things is how you're going to change the world? You're going to have to do this, you know, piece by piece, and you're going to need a lot of support. It's almost, you know, say in this, in this uh, toxic environment, it's almost like running a political campaign. Gotcha. No, that, that makes a lot of sense, Bill. And I mean, my, my, my feel is over the last few years, there's been more and more of this. You talked about SPACs, you know, any investor can own a few shares of some of these companies, right? It doesn't have to all just be, be big guys, like you say.